So you want to build your dream gaming setup, but you don't know where to start. Well, it's a good thing you clicked on this video because I'm going to be showing you everything that you need to know. First, we're going to start with everything that you'll need. The foundation of every single gaming setup is the desk. When choosing what desk to buy, there's a few things to keep in mind. The size of it can impact how much you can put on your desk and how much potential your setup really has. Make sure you measure where your desk is going to go so you can see what the max length you can buy is. A rule of thumb is to get the biggest desk that you can up to a point, obviously. The bigger the desk you have, the more potential your setup really has because being confined to a small space while you have the space for a bigger one can really suck. Another thing to keep in mind is what material your desk will be made out of and if it's sturdy enough for everything that you want. If you're planning on having one or two monitors, going with a desk made out of particle board isn't a really bad idea. Lag Captain or Limbin Tabletop is a pretty good option for being relatively sturdy, really cheap, and looking great. On the other hand, if you're going to have more than two monitors or you're going to use a monitor layout that puts a lot of pressure on one part of your desk, and if you don't want to put an extra leg under the middle of your desk, or don't want to add a metal wall bracket, I'd recommend saving yourself the hassle of your desk bending and go with a solid wood tabletop. The Carbly Butcher Block from Ikea is a pretty good option for this. Though it's pretty expensive, it's well worth the price for the durability it offers. Obviously, Ikea isn't the only place you can get desks and tabletops from, but they're the most popular in the gaming space and allow you a lot of options for every single budget. Now with a desktop, you're probably going to want something to hold it up. There's a few options for this. You can have four legs, two legs and one Alex drawer, or just two Alex drawers. With a very small desk, like 35 inches long, you're going to have to go with four legs no matter what, because the Alex drawers are just too wide to have anywhere near enough leg room. With a 55 inch desk or longer, you still have the option of going with four legs, but I wouldn't recommend it because it looks kind of wonky and it's not very sturdy. You can also have two legs on one side and an Alex drawer on the other, or for the most durable option with the most drawer space, you can go with two Alex drawers. It mostly comes down to personal preference and how much stuff you're gonna need in drawers. Arguably, one of the most important parts of your setup is going to be the PC. There are two ways of going about getting a PC, either buying a pre-built or building your own. When buying a pre-built PC, there's a few things that you should know. You need to make sure you're buying from a reputable source that knows what they're doing. I'd recommend avoiding Amazon because of the amount of sellers that are kind of sketchy. But if you really want to buy one from Amazon, Alienware, Acer, Origin, and Cyberpower are decent options. Another place to buy good pre-built PCs from is NZXT. They're reputable, their pieces are well built, and they have a lot of options ranging from about $700 to $7,000. But no matter where you're buying it from, before you make the investment into buying a PC, make sure you do your research on who you're buying it from. Also keep in mind that a pre-built PC will always cost more than all the parts in it combined because of the building fee. Obviously, you're gonna need to know what you're gonna be using your PC for. This will allow you to buy a pre-built computer with the right parts in it for your needs. But buying a pre-built PC will almost never allow you to have the exact parts for your exact needs. That's why you'd build a custom PC to fine tune everything and build it around your budget. To make sure every part that you've chosen is compatible with each other, I'd recommend going to PCPartBreaker.com, putting all your stuff in, and making sure there's no problems. For anyone who doesn't really understand what each part of a PC does and is, I'll quickly go over all of them and explain them. The CPU or processor is kind of like the brain of the computer. It tells everything else what to do and when to do it. The GPU or graphics card is what processes the video on your screen. Having a better GPU allows you to run games at higher settings and at higher FPS. The motherboard is kind of like the skeleton or nervous system of your PC. It connects every component and allows them all to talk to each other. The RAM is where short-term memory is stored that your CPU is currently using. It's used for having a lot of tabs open or anything that needs to be stored on your PC, but not permanently on your HDD or SSD. PSU or power supply is kind of like the heart of your PC. It plugs into the wall and gives every other part in your PC power. The HDD or hard drive is long-term storage, though unlike an SSD, it's a physical disk in a physical housing that writes data onto it. The more modern and faster option is an SSD. These are much faster than hard drives, and they're all electronic, so they're more durable, and they don't make sound. And lastly, the PC case. You probably already know what this is. It holds every PC part and directs air in an optimal way for best cooling. Once you've chosen each PC part you want to use, it's time to build it. There are a lot of PC building guides on YouTube, but I'd recommend this one from TechSource specifically. The next thing you're going to need is a monitor or monitors. Here's a few things to consider when you're buying one. You're going to want a 1080p resolution or higher, but keep in mind, the higher the resolution, the more pricier it's going to be, and the harder it's going to be on your GPU in games. Though you can still change the resolution certain games render at in the game settings. When trying to figure out what resolution you want, you're going to have to consider the size of your monitor. If you're planning on getting a 24 inch monitor, which is basically default, you can get a 1080p display and it'll be fine because of the pixels per inch. The less pixels there are, 
and the bigger the screen, the more you'll be able to see each pixel because they'll be spread apart farther. If you're going for a 27 or 32 inch screen, I'd recommend getting 1440p resolution or higher. It'll make the image extremely sharp and give you the option to play games at higher resolutions. These are just suggestions though. You can get a 1440p or 4K 24 inch monitor, it just won't be as worth it, especially for the price because there'll be diminishing returns at that point. And with a 1080p, 27 or 32 inch monitor, it just won't be as clear and will kind of be blurry, especially at 32 inches. Next is the hertz or refresh rate of your monitor, meaning how many times the image on your screen is refreshed per second. 60 hertz is basically the minimum you can get nowadays. If you have a 60 hertz monitor, the max FPS you'll be able to see visually is 60, even if your game is running at higher. That's why I'd recommend getting a 120 hertz monitor, especially if you're going to be gaming, because the more FPS you can see, the smoother your gaming experience will be. But just like the resolution, the higher the hertz is on your monitor, the pricier it will be. Though if you're going for a multi-monitor setup, your second display doesn't really have to be that great since you're not going to be playing any games on it. So when you're choosing a secondary monitor, you can get a relatively low-end screen and it'll be just fine. You also need to make sure that your desk is big enough for your monitors and your PC at the same time. Make sure before choosing your display size to measure and compare to your desk size. Now that we've got the desk, PC, and monitor figured out, you're going to need some good peripherals. Choosing the right ones can be really crucial to your gaming experience. There's a lot of things that go into choosing the right keyboard. First, there's switch types. You can either go with mechanical or membrane. Membrane keyboards are generally much cheaper because they're basically just a button that presses down when you press the keycap down. But usually membrane keyboards are just not as well built as mechanical ones. Mechanical keyboards are much more customizable and have a lot of different options. Most pre-built mechanical keyboards have a hot swappable PCB, which means you can take out the switches that are already in it and change them to really whatever you want. There's blue switches, which are quite loud, tactile, and clicky. And on the opposite side, there's black switches, which are super linear, thoughty, and quiet. You can really get anything you want with mechanical keyboards. You can even build one yourself, but I'm not going to get too far into that because that's a whole other rabbit hole that I don't want to go down. There's a lot of different videos on YouTube though, so you can check them out. There's not as many things that go into choosing a good mouse though, but there are still a few options. Some have a lot of side buttons and some are honeycombed. And some even have a ball instead of buttons? Other than that, there's something called DPI. This is the speed at which you can set the sensitivity of your mouse's sensor. The higher the max DPI, the more sensitive your mouse is to small movements. Almost every modern mouse has a dedicated DPI button right behind the scroll wheel that you can quickly use to change the DPI. Like I mentioned earlier, you can also have side buttons on your mouse. If you play a lot of games, I'd recommend buying one with these on them as they can be a really easy keybind for things you use a lot in games. Though almost every gaming mice has at least two of these secondary buttons. For audio, you can have speakers, headphones, or both. There's not much to say about headphones as it really comes down to personal preference and the design and sound you really want from them. For speakers, you really need to think about the size and where they can go on your desk. If you have or you're planning on getting decently big speakers, you need to think of where you're going to put them because sometimes it can be really hard to put them in optimal positions. You also have the option to choose between wired and wireless for all your peripherals. There's obviously benefits for both wired and wireless. Wireless allows you to not feel any tension from your headphones or your mouse while you're playing games. It also just makes your setup look a bit cleaner, but obviously you're going to need to charge them eventually. And with wired, you might feel a bit of cord tug from your mouse or the cord coming off your headphones rubbing on you, but you won't need to charge them. It's all really personal preference with this, and you'll definitely need to consider everything before choosing either one. It's likely that you're going to be at your desk setup for a big part of the day, so make sure you buy a comfortable and supportive chair it can be very needed. When choosing a chair, I'd recommend staying away from the so-called gaming chairs. They're usually not very supportive, comfortable, and they don't really support your back very well. They're also usually very expensive for just no reason. So try to choose a more office style chair. There are a lot on Amazon that you can browse through, but again, just like everything, it's all personal preference, so go with what you want. Lighting is also a big part of your setup, and getting it right can be a bit challenging if you don't really know what you're doing. One thing to avoid is putting exposed LED lights on the wall or really anywhere. They can look extremely distracting and pretty tacky because you'll be able to see each diode from each LED. A simple lighting trick is to put an LED strip not on the wall, but on the back of your desk so that it can bounce off the paint. This can really accent and complement your desk and bring attention to it instead of being really distracting. You should also try to make all of the LED lights in your setup work together and be cohesive. I'd recommend having no more than two colors because having more can kind of make your setup feel a bit random and confusing. The common color scheme is blue and pink, which works very well together and can really bring your setup to another level. Your setup's wallpaper can kind of go hand in hand with your LED lights, and if you do it wrong, it can really ruin it all. There's two options for wallpapers, either a static one or a live one. For static wallpapers, there's a ton of places you can find them on Google, 
really just have to search it up. Uh, but make sure you go with a 4K image, even if your monitor isn't 4K. Now for live wallpapers, it's a bit more complicated. The best way to go about this is getting Wallpaper Engine on Steam. It's a few dollars, but allows you access to any live wallpaper you could ever think of. Just keep in mind that a live wallpaper is basically just a video playing at all times on your computer, so it may hinder your PC's performance if you have lower end hardware. If your setup is gonna have multiple monitors, you may not know which way to orientate them. There are a ton of monitor layouts, so let me go over a few and tell you how they work. First, there's one of the most common, the T monitor layout. To do this, you're gonna need one horizontal monitor directly in front of you, like you normally would, and then have a vertical monitor either to the left or right of it. This allows you to use your second monitor for vertical video, like TikToks or Instagram Reels, but it also just allows you to have Spotify or Discord open at all times. The one thing that's always the same, no matter what monitor layout you choose, is that having multiple monitors allows you to do a lot of multitasking and allows you to have apps or websites open that you use a lot while you're doing something else on your main monitor. Another layout is dual horizontal monitors, either side by side or above and below. They're both relatively the same with their uses, but both have totally different desk space needs. To have them side by side, you're gonna have to have a lot of extra desk space. This also usually prevents you from having your speakers in optimal positions. On the other hand, having them above and below allows you the same benefits of having two horizontal monitors, allows you to have your speakers in a much better position, and just generally allows you to have a lot more desk space. And if you angle the bottom monitor slightly up and the top one slightly down, it'll be just as comfortable for your neck as the other one. Now, once you've chosen everything and decided what your setup is going to be, there's still one small thing that we haven't talked about, and that's adding personality to your setup. There's a lot of ways to do this, so I'll list off a couple. Wall art can be a really easy way to show your personality a bit, and it can easily cover up blank spaces on walls that just look kind of weird without. You can also add some greenery, whether it's fake plants or real plants, it can really add a lot and make your setup much more cozy. You can also add figurines and collectibles around your setup. It's completely personal, so just make it exactly how you want and how you are happy with your setup. Now you know how to make your dream setup into a reality. I hope you learned something from this video, or at the very least, enjoyed watching it. Thank you for being here, I appreciate it, and I hope you have a great day.